eras, times, sensibilities. When you're evaluating greatness in virtually any medium, you have to take into account certain things that might not make total sense to you, but you have to understand that they make sense to the universe. In this case, I'm 23 years old, and if you're watching this video, you're probably in that age range, maybe a little older or younger. Maybe even if you're considerably older, you probably still don't remember this particular player. He was great, and I think all of us understand that. The things he did were fantastic, and the accomplishments that he had were significant. And more than anything, the impact he had on this league has meant an awful lot to the position that he played. And it's because of him that the players that we know so well today who play the same position do many of the things they do. He laid the groundwork for the way his particular position was played. And yet, if you're to look at his statistics, numbers, accomplishments, accolades, and things like that, you're going to say he really wasn't anything special at all. In fact, you could say in some ways his career was unmemorable. But there is a thing called era. There is a thing called the times in which you played. And it's understood that for the time period that Dick Butkus played in, he was tremendous. That his impact went beyond numbers. That there were things outside of his control that influenced the way his career can be perceived. And that he, although there are some holes in the way we can remember him, was a memorably great player. So, even though his numbers and accolades can't compare to a guy like Junior Seau, Brian Erlacher, uh, Zach Thomas, we're going to put him up here above those players because this league would not be where it is right now without Dick Butkus. In many ways, the way he played the middle linebacker position paved the way for the way we perceive it today to allow the previously mentioned players to play as well as they did. So, Dick Butkus's career. We're going to evaluate it, but we're going to do so with a lens of understanding. With the understanding that not everything that happened in his career was in his control, and that he played in a completely different era of football. All right, Dick Butkus and his career statistics. The numbers here are going to be a little thin simply because statistic tracking was not great back in the era of Dick Butkus but we have some numbers that we can look at. Um, nine seasons played, 119 games played, 1,020 tackles, 27 fumble recoveries, 22 interceptions, 166 interception return yards for an approximate value of 120. If you weight that number out, it comes out to 99. Average season, he played an average of 13 games a season, which is very good given that when he played, it was a 14-game season. 113 tackles a season, three fumble recoveries, two and a half picks, 18 interception return yards, and an approximate value of 13, which holds up pretty well to most of the players we've been evaluating. And then average game. In an average game, Dick Butkus would give you nine tackles, 20% chance he would recover a fumble, 20% chance of an interception. Both those numbers are very good for a middle linebacker. One thing that should be said about Dick Butkus, however, is that one of his greatest strengths was something that was not kept track of at the time by official NFL statistics. Dick Butkus had very strong hands and was very good at ripping the ball out of a ball carrier. However, at the time he played, the NFL did not keep track of forced fumbles. So we have no idea how many forced fumbles he might actually be responsible for. It could be 30, it could be 50, it could be 70. We'll just never know because nobody bothered to keep track of it back then. However, I don't think it's unfair to say that he could have been responsible for 35 or 40, which would make him one of the greatest forced fumblers of all time and would mean that he was either partially or entirely responsible for at least one forced turnover a game over his career. Okay, team success for Dick Butkus. Over the nine years he played, his teams won 48 games and lost 72 of them with four ties for a winning percentage of exactly 40%. Now that's very poor, and it arguably means he shouldn't be on this list. You may have also noticed that I didn't include any playoff statistics for Dick Butkus. That's because he doesn't have any because he never played in a playoff game. 
Dick Butkus teams never made the playoffs once. And with a winning record like that, you can see why. In fact, quite often, Dis Dick Butkus teams were not any good. So, with that in mind, we have to take into account certain things. Was it Dick Butkus's fault that the Bears teams that he was on didn't make the playoffs? For the most part, I would say no. If you look at his individual numbers and the impact he had on that defense, I say you can't really put it on him, but it's a big reason why he can't be in the top five. A player who had his impact on the league and a player who has meant as much to the league as Dick Butkus really could have easily been a top five defensive player ever on this list, but the lack of success here puts him at where I end up having him. Okay, on to another potentially troubling area for Dick Butkus, the defensive ranks of the defenses that he played on. So first, let's take a look at points. He was on a top five defense twice and a top 10 defense four times. The other five years, he was on a defense that was well within the bottom half of the league. You have to remember that when Dick Butkus played, there were far fewer teams out there, and therefore his average rank of 10th, which would be quite good today, is actually probably a little below even average by the standards back then. And then we go to yards. He was on a top five defense in terms of yards twice and a top 10 defense four times. The other five kicking around near the bottom there. Once again, for a good portion of Dick Butkus's career, he was in a league with far fewer teams. So that average rank of 11th is actually subpar. So this category does not reflect very well on Mr. Butkus. So with all of that negativity, what is the saving grace for Dick Butkus besides his individual statistics? Because individual statistics, particularly when you're talking about stats as old as these, can mislead. I think the big thing here is that even though his teams were not very successful, the rest of the league and the people who followed the league at the time saw it fit to honor him the best they could. And here are his career accolades. They're thin because back when he played, there just weren't as many to go around. But in nine years of playing football, Dick Butkus made eight Pro Bowls. He made the first team All-Pro six times, second team All-Pro twice, and was twice the NFL Defensive Player of the Year, back to back, 1969 and 1970. So to me, the fact that the league did their best to honor how great a player he was in spite of the lack of team success tells me he was an all-time great and he deserves to be in this top 10 list. Now, approximate value, he ranks 213th in approximate value, and the weighted number ranks out to 160th. Not very strong at all. A lot of that can be contributed to having a shortened career. Um, obviously, he's a player who took a lot of abuse, and nine seasons was all he had. Finally, the peak season of Dick Butkus, and this is going to be kind of difficult because, really, it's hard to get numbers from specific seasons way back in the 60s. So, I'm going to go off what I have. 1965. Five interceptions, 84 interception return yards, and seven fumble recoveries. Now, if you assume that he had at least two forced fumbles this year, which is very reasonable given the kind of player that he was and the way he played, that means he was partially responsible for at least one forced turnover in every game, um, per game, rather. So that 16 approximate value holds up very well with any great middle linebacker you can care to name. So those are pretty strong numbers, even if we have a limited data set to work with. An average game consisted of a 40% chance of an interception and a 50% chance of a fumble recovery. So if you just throw in a couple of forced fumbles in there and you can see what I mean with his ability to make plays and get the ball back to his offense. That year the Bears were second in points allowed at 19.6 points a game and number eight in yards 305 a game. So you can't really say that whatever the Bears didn't accomplish that year, they did not make the playoffs, was his fault. The accomplishments of Dick Butkus, the individual player, are tremendous. But the accomplishments of Dick Butkus's teams are lackluster. Ultimately, I think our answer lies somewhere in the middle. He's a great player, and I believe his impact on the position, as well as how players play defense, deserves a top 10 ranking. 
and a ranking above other players that have considerably better individual numbers because of how long they played, as well as much, 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 much greater team success. However, when we're talking about this specific comparison between Dick Butkus and Ray Lewis, I believe it's a no-brainer. Dick Butkus, in many ways, was Ray Lewis 40 years ago, meaning to say Ray Lewis is the new and improved version of Dick Butkus. They're very similar players, and when they played, they did very similar things. But Ray Lewis played much longer. His career was almost twice as long. Ray Lewis won far more games. His teams were far more successful. He played in many playoff games. He won two championships. And in general, he was just a more accomplished player. So the two players are very similar, and that has to be noted in a comparison like this. But given that Ray Lewis is better in virtually every way you can judge, I have to give the nod to Ray Lewis. However, for his importance, for his impact, for the way we remember him, I would put Dick Butkus in second of the players we've evaluated thus far. But there are more players to come, so keep an eye out for the next video.